a webinar on how to complete the application for the Illegal Marijuana Market Enforcement Grant Program. Uh, my name is Rima Atung. I am the program coordinator for this grant. Before we get started, I just want to do some quick housekeeping. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the CJC's YouTube page. Um, please feel free to review the webinar recording and any other inf information and share it with anyone you think will benefit um, from it and who may want to apply for funds through this program. Additionally, uh, we ask that you stay on mute for the presentation. We're happy to answer any questions at any time. Um, if you do have a question, please use the raise hand function on Teams and then either chat or take yourself off mute momentarily to ask your question. This just helps me stay organized and make sure that I can get to everyone. Um, so I appreciate your cooperation with that. And then at the end of the webinar, there's going to be time for questions and answers as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Here is our agenda for today. Uh, we're gonna do a real quick overview of the Criminal Justice Commission. Um, we'll, we'll look at the background of the Illegal Marijuana Market Enforcement Grant Program or the Marijuana Grant as I call it. Um, we'll look at the operating guidelines, the requirement process and estimated timeline for applying for funds. And then, as I said before, we'll have time for any questions. So first, uh, the Criminal Justice Commission or CJC is a seven member body of appointed commissioners. Um, the list of commissioners and their bios are available on our website. The link is down here at the bottom of this slide. The commission is tasked with making decisions such as updates to the sentencing grid or grant awards for Oregon's uh, criminal justice and legal systems. Um, to support the commission, there is an administrative agency, which is about 30 people that I'm a part of, and the agency handles the day-to-day -day administrative tasks um, that support the commission. It's a little bit confusing because we're both called the Criminal Justice Commission. So, you know, again, let me know if it's confusing at any point. Um, but, you know, in essence, the commission itself, those seven members make the decisions and the agency that supports it carries out their mission and the administrative piece. Um, we also work on research projects, we staff policy groups, and we administer those grant programs that uh, are funneled through this agency. The statutory purpose of the agency is to improve the effectiveness and efficiency of state and local criminal justice systems by providing a centralized and impartial forum for statewide policy development and planning. So that's kind of a mouthful, but basically um, it boils down to us doing a lot of research and using that data and research and evidence as much as possible to make sure that the funding and all of the programs um, determined by the legislature are uh, as effective as possible. Um, we also are included in a lot of state bills and initiatives just to do a data and reporting piece since we are that impartial data uh, um, agency for the state. So that's just a real brief overview of the CJC. Now let's get into the reason we're here today. Um, the Illegal Marijuana Market Enforcement Grant Program or Marijuana Grant was established in 2018 as a program for cities and counties um, to support law enforcement prosecution and enforcement activities related to the of the illegal marijuana market enforcement. Oh my gosh, that was such a mouthful and I completely scrambled it. I apologize. <laughs> The grant was created in response to the rise in illegal grows um, in illegal marijuana grows in the state and the criminal activity associated with it. So the funds support enforcement activities and prosecution. Um, the grant was originally allocated or three million dollars was originally allocated per biennium for the grants. 
back in 2018. In 2021, um, the amount was raised to six million per biennium. And there was a, an expansion at that point of the funded activities under the grant to include services to victims um, of human trafficking associated with those illegal marijuana grows. And at that point, there was also an expansion of who was eligible to receive funds uh, to include community-based organizations that were providing services for those impacted individuals. So in the 2023-2025 biennium, a total of 11 million was allocated for the program. So that 6 million regular allocation plus an additional one-time 5 million. The grant review committee um, recommended and the CJC commission ultimately approved to allocate a portion of those funds to existing grantees to maintain or expand their operations. And then uh, about 1.7 million was set aside to be awarded through this competitive request for proposals. So this 1.7 million is what is available through the solicitation and what we're talking about today. Uh, now let's look at some program operating guidelines and rules for this funding. All of the relevant links are included here. So anywhere there's a link that goes directly to the, the different document or guidelines that I'm talking about. So the administrative rules um, are the rules or guidelines that the agency has adopted specific to this funding stream. They were established to make sure funds are going towards the goals and objectives uh, that are identified by the legislature for this program. As I mentioned, there's links to the rules and then to you know, the specific OAR 213 Division 80 there, if you would like more information on that. Um, the next thing that you should be aware of is the CJC's Grant Administration Guide, and that includes CJC's general grant rules that are applicable to all grant programs. For example, it outlines you know, allowable and unallowable costs, reporting timelines, how to submit grant adjustment requests, and other um, kind of day-to-day -day management of grants that are awarded through our agency. Uh, another thing that you should look at prior to um, applying is the request for grant proposals itself. So that's details specific to this particular solicitation. Uh, and then the other link that's going to be very important for you is this one at the bottom here, the online application form. So that brings you to our online system that you'll need to access to be able to submit your application. So please make note of all of these links um, as you will need them. Uh, so the legislative or the legislature identified five funding priorities for this grant or areas where they would like, you know, funding and activities to be focused. Um, the first is rural areas. Second is large scale operations. Third is organized crime. Fourth is diversion of marijuana outside of Oregon. And fifth is the ongoing humanitarian crisis associated with illegal marijuana cultivation and distribution and facilitating connections to assistance and services for individuals impacted. So those are the five legislative priorities. Um, just to give you a little bit more information, the next two slides go through some definitions associated with those priorities. So large scale in this instance means um, operations relative to the applicant's community that involve large quantities of illegal marijuana, quantities of illegal marijuana of significant monetary value, operations that take place over large geographic areas or any combinations of those circumstances. Rural areas means a geographic area that is located at least 25 miles from any city with a population of 30,000 or more, or the entirety of county. As the priorities were set for this grant, so those are um, those are in the the program rules and the commission rules. So. These things are set in relation to the grant. Um, the humanitarian crisis 
is similar. It means a set of circumstances that directly impacts individuals who have been recruited, harbored, transported, or otherwise obtained through threat of force or use of force, fraud or coercion for the purposes of subjecting, subjecting individuals to wage theft and all of those other um, harms or coerced performance of duties or acts related to or occurring during unlawful marijuana cultivation or distribution. So those have some very specific definitions. Um, again, those are included in the, in the information in those links that were in the previous slide. The commission also identified priorities for this funding program. Um, there are five of those as well. They include funding training opportunities that assist applicants in addressing illegal marijuana markets, addressing cases that require complex financial accounting, um, tracking outcomes, collaboration with other agencies and organizations, and then the fifth one is providing culturally and linguistically specific and responsive services to person affected, persons affected by the humanitarian crisis. For this, specific solicitation um, for the 2023-25 biennium, there is actually an additional commission priority that was identified, um, and that priority is to have $400,000 of the available funds um, be available or prioritized for eligible community-based organizations that apply to provide access to services as described previously. So that's a a commission priority that was added just for this RFGP. Any comments or questions so far? I don't see any hands raised, so I will continue. All right, so let's take a closer look at who is eligible to apply. Um, eligible applicants include cities and counties, so that's units of local government, and then community-based organizations, um, which means a nonprofit organization that's actively registered to do business in the state of Oregon. So there's additional verbiage here on the specifics of who qualifies as a community-based organization or CBO. Um, I do wanna note that cities, counties, and CBOs may apply jointly. It's encouraged, but not required. So here are the funding categories, um, just the general categories of what this funding source supports. So, um, and a few examples for each. So personnel, salaries, wages, and fringe benefits, it's pretty straightforward. Contractual services, um, for example, some of our current grantees contract for waste removal to, to clear out those illegal marijuana grow sites when they've come in and um, removed all the the illegal grow and associated equipment. Um, they also, you know, contract for personnel from county code or other partner agencies. Um, equipment, uh, some examples of that might be large vehicles such as trucks or trailers or um, storage facilities for storing, um, for storing evidence associated with those those grow sites and the associated cases. Uh, supplies, some examples are cameras, lower cost surveillance tools that are used for those investigations. Travel and training, um, you know, specific to the grant purposes. So a lot of folks use those types of funds to do the regional training on marijuana investigation, financial investigation techniques and other similar trainings and then rent utilities and administrative costs. Those are pretty self-explanatory. So let's look at how much is available and when the project period is. So, you know, to start, how much money is available? There is $1,737,767 available for the solicitation. Those funds will be dispersed starting in October of this year. Uh, and the project period is from July 1st of this year to December 31st of next year. You can do a shorter grant period if that is appropriate for your project, but that is the longest grant period that is available for this biennium for these funds. Um, 
the project period is the time frame in which the grantees must spend the awarded funds. So it's important to, to note that and make sure to design your budget with that project period in mind. How much money should we ask for? Um, folks should ask for the amount of funding you can justify within the grant rules and priorities. And then a common question we get is, what about funding after this grant cycle? As noted earlier, the regular appropriation is approximately six million per biennium for this grant. However, just because those funds are available doesn't necessarily mean that your project, if it's funded, will get funds the next time too. So, you know, priorities and allocations are set by the commission ultimately. Um, so please just keep that in mind. So let's look a little bit more closely on allowable and unallowable uses of funds. Um, so allowable uses of funds are generally any program design that meets the rules, statutory requirements, and follow those program guidelines that I mentioned earlier. Uh, preference is definitely given to programs that meet those legislative and commission priorities, um, since that really speaks to what the purpose of these funds are. Some more examples are, you know, agency staff salaries, specialized equipment, contracts for professional services like we kind of discussed before, uh, unallowable uses. You know, there's a, a full list available in that grant administration guide on page five. So please refer to that because we definitely do not allow things on that list. There's another list right after that where there um, that includes some exceptions. Um, but those all must be pre-approved. So please take a look at that list, um, which kind of details out anything. And then as always, contact us if you have questions. Some examples of unallowable uses are, you know, supplanting existing funding for programs that are funded through other sources currently, employee bonuses, marketing and branding. Um, when those marketing and branding items are, you know, preparing a product for sale or marketing to make money. So those are definitely unallowable. So let's jump into the application evaluation process. Uh, we'll talk about the deadlines and the application components in a moment, but first, you know, in general, the applications will be reviewed by staff. So CJC agency staff, a grant review committee, and then the, the CJC commission. Um, the staff review for completeness, completeness and adherence to program rules and guidelines. And we will look at it with a scoring rubric just to make sure everything's in order, all the questions are answered and just do that preliminary review. Um, the grant review committee members review, you know, a little bit more substantively based on the rules and guidelines and then assess preference areas and all of those, um, those legislative and commission priorities and just how well the projects fit with those and what, what those goals and objectives are. And then the commission reviews all of that information, takes the recommendations from the grant review committee, and then they ultimately decide who's funded. So it's, it's a multi-step process. Um, you know, you, you definitely get a lot of different eyes and a lot of different thoughts on on those applications to make sure that everyone is is you know really looked at and we've really considered um, your application thoroughly. So the application itself is split into two parts. Uh, the first part, the preliminary application, is the one that's due in June on June seventeenth, and that consists of a cover sheet, um, just the narrative questions, which is a statement about the program scope, program description, the desired outcomes for your project that you're um, proposing, and then how that project fits under those legislative and commission priorities. Um, and that preliminary application, like I said, is due on the 17th of this month. And it must be completed by the deadline to be eligible for folks to then apply for the final application. So it's super important that you get that in. Um, that piece 
will be reviewed by staff and by the GRC. And that preliminary review is actually beneficial to everyone. It gives us an idea of who is applying and it gives us a chance um, for us to ask questions and request clarification on some of those narrative sections. If we have questions, we'll, we'll send those um, you know, responses and questions to the applicants. And this feedback will help you identify areas in your application to strengthen and may also help you determine you know, where your funding should be focused when you submit your final application. So um, again, it's a, an opportunity to get feedback kind of early on from staff and from the GRC and to then make changes to your application. The final application, which will include those responses to any questions that you get, and the program budget worksheet is gonna be due July 22nd. So you have a good, you know, month to to finalize your application, respond to those questions, and submit that budget worksheet. Um, here is a sample of some of the preliminary application questions. It's kind of small, so I apologize, but um, basically it's just, you know, um, the first sample is just provide a description of your scope and program description, provide a description of what the program funds will be used for. Um, and then, you know, next in the narrative, it breaks out those legislative and commission priorities as separate questions. And you, um, you have opportunity to respond to each of those priorities and say how your specific program that you're proposing responds to or supports each of those priorities. So it's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, and the word limits are fairly short, so they're anywhere from 250 to 500 words, depending on which section. So we want them to be kind of concise and to the point, but it shouldn't be, you know, super lengthy or time consuming to fill out, we're hoping. Um, we also have a sample here of the budget worksheet. So there's a link so you can download the program budget worksheet. This worksheet must be submitted for the final application to be complete. So we provided that sample now. It's available here at this link. We will also provide it when we open up that final application section for those folks who submitted a preliminary application. So you'll have another link in case you haven't downloaded it yet at that point. Um, and this worksheet must be submitted for your final application to be complete. The worksheet is an Excel form. It includes only allowable budget categories. And I do want to note, again, this is kind of small and I apologize, but only certain areas can be filled in. So only places where you can enter information are like in the budget categories, the amounts, um, the, the primary budget form, how it's set up is most areas are locked. So you can only fill in um, information in allowable sections that you know where where you need to input line items relevant to your project but like the the formulas for calculating everything are locked um, if you have any questions or difficulty using this form please let us know uh, you know we do it that way just to make sure that only the allowable budget categories etc are used um, but i know folks have sometimes had difficulty so just let us know Again, that form is available on our CJC website and we'll make it available on the application itself once the final application is opened. Um, the application timeline. Um, so it was opened on May 22nd. As I mentioned before, June 17th is when the preliminary application is due. Um, July First, we're going to, or it, between June 17th and July 1st, we're going to review all those preliminary applications and send out that feedback that I mentioned, and we're going to open the final application. Uh, July 22nd is when the final application is due, and then in early August, uh, we're going to take a look at those final applications and do another review with the Grant Review Committee have them develop their funding recommendations. And then we're looking to present to have 
their final award decision at the August commission meeting on August 28th. So that's the timeline we're going for. Um, and here is just a sample scoring rubric for how staff is going to score that preliminary application. So it's just, um, you know, a, a very simple form. Each section in the program overview gets five points possible. Each section in the um, priority assessment section gets two points possible. Just go through and we'll score it for, you know, completeness and relevancy. Um, and then if, oh, I apologize. If there were questions from the GRC, um, responses to those will also be scored. And similarly, the budget itself will have a score. And I just want to point out this is an analytical tool to help us kind of categorize who provided, you know, complete answers to all the different questions. Um, it is not a decision making device. So, as I mentioned earlier, you know, there's a multiple level review. So, we really do look in depth to all of these applications as much as we we can and we have staff grc and commission members review all of it um, so this is just a, a tool to help us orient ourselves and kind of figure out the overview of of the applications and how they relate to each other but it is not a decision making device uh, just some general things to remember. Um, like I mentioned, questions are limited to 250 to 500 words. Please be focused and direct in your answers. Review all of the materials, all of that. Um, those guidelines are really important. Um, ask us questions. We can help with some things, but not others. For example, we can answer questions on how the program rules apply, what a program requirement means, you know, if there's something unclear in the RFGP itself or troubleshooting with access to the application online, what we can't do is tell you if your answer is good before the deadline, um, recommend contractors or, or things that you should include in your application or answer questions on who else is applying and how much money they want. Um, so here is my contact information. Shelby is our grant liaison for this project. Her contact information is there as well. If you want to join the interested parties list and get updates about this program, please reach out to us and we can add you. Um, so now we just have time for questions. If anyone has any questions or comments, I see a hand up. Um, Don, what's your question? Yeah, hi, thank you. Um, just on the uh, preliminary the, the preliminary application under the program description, I noticed it said uh, brief description of funds, but is there anywhere else in there you want to have like what the total amount of the funding request is going to be at that time? For the preliminary application, no. It's It sounds a little bit weird, but we've been doing this two-step application process for some of our other grants, and it allows us to focus a little bit differently. Um, but for that final application, we will need that amount when we get the budget form. But not for that first preliminary one. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, do we have any other questions? I don't see anything, so. Um, as I mentioned, we're available to answer questions. If you if you think of anything, um, we'll answer them if we can. Um, we'll send the link out for this for this presentation so you can watch it again or share it with folks that might want to apply for these funds. Um, otherwise, I guess thank you for joining us today, and we really appreciate your your attention and participation and look forward to hopefully receiving applications from you. Thank you very much.